Chapter 5. Tuesday at school was one of the worst days possible. We had a substitute who made Felty look like the Queen of Egypt. His name was Mr. Bowen, and he looked like one of those guys who thinks the world centers around P.E., but has to teach other subjects because there are not enough sports jobs to go around. Your teacher's mother is ill, he announced, but I want you to know that there'll be no sub baiting on my shift. I believe in corporal punishment and I'm not afraid to use it. About 10 hands went up. Yes, he hissed. What is corporal punishment? A boy behind me asked. Corpse means the body, like the Marine Corps. A body of Marines. Also, your body. Your physical being. Figured that one out, Einstein. The hand slowly lowered. I imagined whoever asked the question sinking pretty deep in his seat. Mr. Bowen had a crew cut. He was a huge muscular guy. The closest animal I can compare him to is a rhino or a bulldog. But actually, he was more like an army tank. Most people, if you stop to think about it, move their body parts in different directions at different times. This guy's body was so stiff and muscle-bound that he moved in one piece. And boy, did he move. He circled and circled the classroom looking for something for which he could nail someone, an elbow on a desk, a yawn, a sneeze that might sound fake. I finished my language arts early. The assignment Mrs. Felty had left was to write a poem about something you love. It was a dorky assignment, but I got through it easily. I wrote about the pet shop. Having already humiliated about four students for various infractions, Mr. Bowen finally sat down at Felty's desk. Before long, he had his head buried in an issue of Sports Illustrated and was, like most subs, oblivious. It was then that I noticed the note being passed. It started with Karen Single, a red-haired mouse who barely ever speaks to anyone then made its way back to Sarah James, then to Tony. When Tony got the note, he chuckled, then passed it back to me. Pretty much everyone in the class was now watching the progress of the note. Little noises erupted here or there, and everyone waited for the note to get to them. I figured it was something about Marine Corps Sergeant, Mr. Athletic Sub, and I unrolled it carefully, the same way that I do when I have a fortune cookie message. Sharon Trout is a suck-up creep, is what the note said. Sharon sits across the aisle from me. I looked over at her. She leaned toward me, trying to get a glimpse of the message. The kid behind me was tapping my shoulder. Tony gestured for me to pass it on. But the note said, what, what the note said may be true, but somehow I couldn't pass it on. I took the note, folded it, and stuck it in my pocket. A bunch of kids, the ones who hadn't seen it, started groaning. I wasn't paying attention to the sub, just to the kids around me, and all of a sudden, there he was, right on top of me like a tank. What did you put in your pocket? Nothing, I gulped. Nothing, sir. Nothing, sir, I repeated. He was definitely a military type. Stand up. I stood. Raise your arms. I wondered what he was going to do. I once read about an American kid in Singapore who wrote graffiti on the walls and was imprisoned and beaten with a cane. I raised my arms. Bowen emptied out my pockets, a stick of gum, a couple of dog vitamins, a paper clip, a piece of chalk, a rubber band, and the note fell on the floor. The class laughed. Bowen bent down and picked it up. Let's see what you have to say about me, he unfolded the note. Sharon Trout, he read aloud, is a... He stopped. Who is Sharon Trout, he asked. Is she in here? Sharon slyly raised her hand. Young man, the wicked sub said... You will apologize to Miss Trout. But I didn't write it. My voice came out kind of squeaky and scared. Then who did? I looked at Karen Single. Her eyes got wide with fear. I don't know, I offered. You will stay in for a recess and eat your luncheon here with me where I will give you a very pleasant lecture on how to behave and will take your appetite away. When he yelled the last couple of words, the whole class jumped and most of the kids turned back to their desks. I thought of all the, the Ronald Dahl books 
I'd read when where kids are powerless at the mercy of some menacing tyrant. Then I glanced over at Sharon, hoping that she knew I hadn't written it. She had her face down, buried in her arms, so I didn't know what she thought. <laughs>